Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. Before we jump into the alerts, let's take a look in the community and talk about who got caught being hot this week. Uh, this week goes to someone who's just been with us for a few weeks, but uh, Cheryl has jumped in, uh, posted some great trade ideas, answered other members' questions, asked some great questions, just providing value overall. Love it. Keep up the good work, Cheryl. You got caught being hot. Uh, also, uh, had a uh, there was a post in the community today about uh, trying to make sure that you're seeing all the posts. It defaults to your personal feed right here, and you got to go in and manually change it to everything. And then it can when you do something, sometimes it flips back. So, what I wanted to make sure everybody is aware of is I I never scroll through the feed like this to find new posts. All I do is use this bell up here. And so you can see anytime there's a post or somebody likes anything or anything happens, uh, it notifies. It's, you know, I've got one notification right here. So if I just click on the bell, uh, then it brings up any new post that I have. And then, um, and then once I'm, you know, if I see it's just a bunch of likes and things like that, I can see that. And then I can just hit this button and mark all is red. And then that notification goes away. Um, you also need to make sure that you have your notification set to what you want. So just click on this settings wheel right here. And then you can say, how would you like to be notified just on mobile? And that's just the mobile app, uh, email, both. Uh, and then you can choose all the different things that you want. If you just want to be notified of posts from us, the host, or from others that follow you or everybody, you have total control over those notifications. Okay. So make sure you, make sure you do that. I think that's the easiest way to, uh, to navigate this community. I know there's some little quirks about it that are a little goofy, but, uh, that's how I do it. So hopefully that is helpful. Um, so that's that. Let's, oh, the other thing I was going to mention, the other thing in the community that I wanted to point out, if, uh, if you didn't get a chance to check it out is, um, I'm going to search for Tim's name. So Tim Weiss, one of our members, he, uh, he posted a very detailed, um, uh, post, uh, earlier this week. And let me see if I can find it. Let me just click on Tim's name, all activity. And he, 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 he made several very detailed posts and then he posted this video. Love the, uh, love the skin tight turtleneck, Tim rocking, love it. Uh, but he, he, he detailed out a very specific plan and with back tests and all kinds of stuff of things that he is doing for a strategy that works for him. Now, if you're a brand new trader and just learning options, this is probably going to be over your head, but if not, it's just, it's just a very well thought out and documented and kind of post, uh, about the strategy that, that he's using. It's not for everybody, uh, but certainly love the detail and love everything that Tim provided. So that is awesome stuff, Tim. Keep up the good work there and keep us posted on your strategy. Let's go to the alerts and check out what's going on with all the alerts and all the current positions. Uh, starting with the 10th was Monday. And by the way, just as a reminder, I posted in the community, next Monday is President's Day. This is coming Monday, so markets will be closed. No alerts. Uh, we'll still be checking in the community but uh, markets are closed. All right, so Monday the 10th, first trade was an opening trade in Google. We put on a new iron duck in Google. And so let's go to the platform, check out Google. So here's that, and markets are closed right now, so don't don't take any uh, notice of that P&L line. That's not correct. But uh, you can see prices way up our, our duck head now. And if we look at the probability, still got a, about a 19, 20% chance uh, that price can get back into the duck head. So let me actually get my uh, drawing tool here in case I need to do something. All right, so um, you know, still got about a 19.5% chance that price could get down into the duck head. So once we get under 15, under 10, then we'll look to potentially take that off early. But for now, we're just holding on to our Google Duck. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in ZW. So we just added another iron condor in ZW. Now we've got two of them. So if we take a look, 
Uh, here's the here's the original one that we had on price is kind of hanging out right here. Now there's no value left in those in those in that call side, so trying to close that is is pretty tough unless you want to pay up a couple cents. So we're just holding on to this. It's still within our range, and so what we're hoping for is we get a little bit of a bounce higher in price, and we can just take this off. Either way, we're going to be closing this trade. It only has seven days left to expiration, so sometime next week we will be closing that one. And then the alert I just mentioned is this one here. So you can see price is still pretty centered. Nothing to do but wait on that piece. Next trade, closing trade in FXI. So we had a short strangle on in FXI, booked around 35% of max profit. And so we took that one off. Uh, we may look to re-enter if, if implied volatility pops back up. Uh, it's still at 72. I didn't, I didn't even look at that one today. I probably would have put something on now that I look at it. But, um, you know, if, if implied volatility is still high into next week, we'll look at potentially adding, uh, re-entering in FXI. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in SPY. So we rolled our short call vertical from Feb to March. And uh, so let's take a look at SPY. This market just continues to be strong. Uh, it was down yesterday, rallied back up down and today rallied back up that's just been the name of the game so here's uh prices hanging out right inside of our range with spy just holding this for some of that downside protection some short uh short delta next trade we did a uh a post earnings short put vertical in shopify so if you're not familiar with the strategy make sure you review our earnings course we provide kind of step by step on how this works but basically if, uh, if a stock announces earnings and then um, once that earnings announcement is over and the markets open up, if price opens above the expected move. So I kind of drew it, if you can see it, I drew a line here on the chart just kind of depicting where that expected move was. Well, price opened up here. Uh, price came down a little bit. We entered the trade about right here. And what we're looking at is typically you're going to get kind of steady to higher prices. Now, what's going on right now is actually pretty typical. I'm not, I'm not big on support and resistance. I don't really believe that is a true edge. But if you look at the expected move right here, I mean, price came down, bounced off, came back down, bounced off, came back down, and it closed just under the the uh, where that uh, expected move was. So, uh, what we're doing is we're hoping that price uh, gives us a little bit of a bounce into next week. And these options only have seven days left. So if we can get a little bit of a bounce higher back into range and close that one out, that's what we're looking for in Shopify. We've also got uh, an iron duck and I've got this alert uh, later on, but basically we've got this earnings iron duck price is hanging out right here in the beak. So we just let this expire. It's so far up. Uh, we just let it expire. So we're going to book that $196 beak profit. By the time you're watching this, you will have already received that alert. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So we rolled one of our short call verticals and we did this one out to April. Yeah, so we've got we've got two pieces in here still. We've got the, uh, the one that's in March. You can see prices hanging out just outside the range here. And then the alert that I just mentioned, the one in April, prices hanging out inside the range here. So again, just holding these for that short delta exposure. And right now we're a little over one to one on our ratio of short delta versus our theta. Next trade, uh, rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So basically the exact same thing. We just rolled this one from Feb out to April. And we've got two pieces in there as well. So if we look at QQQ, Here's the one in March where price is outside the range. And then this is the one in April where price is in the range. We just rolled this one. So again, just holding that for that downside bias. Next trade, opening trade in SPX. So we put on a new iron duck in SPX. So we, have, we did this with 18 days to expiration. Now we've got two of those. And so here they are. Machines running a little slow today. Oh, that's, uh, it's, I guess I'm running slow. That was SPY. Okay, so here's, uh, here's the alert. Uh, you can see prices hanging out right here. And so we got some time left in that one. And then the other one that we have on from a previous alert is this one right here. So if, if we put our price slice right here, you can see we have only got about 13% probability 
that it'll get down back into the duckhead area. And so if price kind of stays here, it goes a little bit higher in early next week, we'll probably just close this out, book that $145 beak profit and move on. Next trade, we had a closing trade in Tesla. So we had an iron duck in Tesla and we booked beak profit there. Price had uh, run higher. If we take a look at a chart of Tesla, it's kind of calmed down after its meteoric rise and fall. Um, so it pushed up, came back down, and it's kind of hanging out here. So this day here, when price pushed higher, we went ahead and booked that, booked that beak profit and, uh, and got it out of that one with a nice little beak profit. Next trade, opening trade in Roku. So we did an earnings iron duck in Roku, and this one just had one day to expiration at the time when we put it on. So we put it on yesterday, uh, expires today, and they announced after the bell yesterday. Well, what a wild ride Roku had. Let's take a look at that. And so, you know, it opened up significantly and then just all day, just down, 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 down and allowed us to book basically a duck head. Now we did take it off early. I put the theoretical position back in here because uh, there was a question in the community. You know, why, 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 why close this out? Why not just let it expire? And assuming price does expire in between these short strikes right here, you can just let it expire. The position will disappear. You, you book max profit. The problem is, and why we don't like to do that with stocks, and especially if it's this close, is if price would have made just a little move higher and closed in between your short call and your long call, then you're going to get assigned short shares. And you don't have the protection because those other options expired and you're just assigned, assigned shares. And so you're carrying that risk. Now, is that a huge deal? No, I'm, but you just need to understand what that uh, that situation. If this was SPX or something that expired to cash, we would have just let it expire, but we just bought this back for 25 cents, uh, booked that uh, nice profit and are out of the end. We're out of the trade. So nice trade there in Roku, nice reversal for us. Uh, opening trade in NVIDIA. So we did a, a post earning short put vertical in NVIDIA. Again, another situation where price, uh, they announced earnings, NVDA. They announced earnings and price opened above the expected move. I just drew this little line on my chart to show what that expected move was. Opened up here and then it did, it, it rallied to a point where we were over 40% of max profit. It just came so quickly and I thought, well, we'll just let this run a little bit and see if we can get a little bit more. Uh, it did come back down off of its highs, but we're still in the profit on this one, uh, up uh, about 150 bucks. And if we get a little bit of movement uh, up into early next week, we'll just go ahead and close that out. Next trade, closing trade in GILD. So we had a short strangle on in GILD, booked over 35% of profit of max profit in just seven days on that. If we take a look at a chart, of GILD, uh, you can see implied volatility is still really high. So we, we will look to potentially re-enter in here. You know, this is the implied volatility is high. You know, they just announced earnings a couple of weeks ago, but the implied volatility stayed high because they are doing some clinical trials on um, on some medication for the coronavirus. And so they're, that's that's the major risk. I mean, they're, that's why there's the uncertainty. That's why the options are expensive is because you know, if this thing gets approved or disapproved, then there could be a, a big move in GILD. But um, uh, I think it's worth the risk. You know, that's why we that's why we sell premium is because that implied volatility is almost always overstated, and we we benefited from that. And you know, we may jump back in and uh, and uh, sell some more premium in GILD. Next trade, closing trade in RUT. So we closed out our weekly double calendar, booked a nice profit uh, in there. So these uh, couple alerts here today, uh, we put those through our alert system. And then I realized after the fact that they were they were delayed, they were stuck. So uh, that actually benefited you all. I know a lot of you got out of much better prices in RUT than we did and booked a lot, uh, a lot bigger profits. So uh, good for you there, but still a nice profit that we got. We just happened to get out a little bit earlier than than most, I think. 
And then lastly is that Shopify earnings iron duck that we just let expire and booked beak profit on. So those are all the trade alerts. Let's take a look at the position. So oil has been making a little bit of a bounce for us, which has been nice. We've got this short strangle price was all the way over here and it's come back closer to center and uh, giving us some profits. So we're up about 400 bucks uh, looking for a little potential move higher and then we could book this baby. So we'll see what happens next week. Uh, we've still got some decent time on that 32 days. So uh, still got some decent time to let that happen. ES, we've got a long put vertical that we're holding for that short delta. Uh, this thing is going to expire next week. Yeah, we've got seven days. So we'll be looking to roll to keep that short delta on on that trade. You can't get assigned an ES unless you let the options expire. So no risk of assignment, even though it's in the money. So we will roll that next week. GC Gold, we've got two pieces on here. We've got a We've got a short call vertical that was part of our previous iron condor. And then um, that one's out of range. So if we can get a little bit of down movement in gold, we will uh, hopefully we can get back a little of that. And then we put on another full iron condor uh, where you can see price is pretty centered, just waiting for some more time to pass on that piece. Natty gas, uh, we've got this adjusted strangle. You see price is hanging out right here. So just waiting for some more theta decay in natty gas. If we do move closer to one of these break-evens, I will look to potentially add, let's see what implied volatility is doing. If we check out UNG, uh, yeah, implied volatility is popped back up. So I would look to add to this if, uh, if that happens in natty gas. Bonds. So bonds, we are, we've got this adjusted strangle we've, that we adjusted into the 161 straddle. We are actually up a couple hundred bucks, 200, 250, something like that overall on the trade now. And that's pretty cool because if you, and this just kind of gives you an idea of why we roll and adjust the way that we do. If we take a look at, let's go to the continuous contract of ZB and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let's go to a one year chart. We put this trade on, let's see if I can get this to, uh, there we go. So we, we put this trade on way back here, way back in this area, and just had this huge rally in bonds. I mean, that is tough to defend when you're putting on a premium selling strategy, just kind of a rip your face off rally. And, and so we just stayed mechanical, rolled up the untested side, rolled out to the next cycle, and then what happened? Well, then prices started to consolidate into a lot more narrow of a range. And so sometimes the, some of the sometimes the question I'll get is is okay, wouldn't it would it have been better just to cut your losses and use that capital on other trades? Well, there's there's a couple factors there. One is uh, yeah, it depends on what opportunity is out there. But if we look at um, TLT so that we can see the uh, so that we can see the implied volatility, you know, implied volatility spiked, and that's what we—that's where we put this on, and then we just got our face ripped off with that rally, that one directional move, and so we we had to make the adjustments. But look at implied volatility. I mean, it stayed high the entire time, and so if we get out, we're just going to want to get back in. So there's no reason not to just stay in and stay mechanical like we do, like we teach in the course and roll the up, roll up the untested side, roll out to the next cycle, continue to book those credits, collect those credits along the way and wait for price to kind of stabilize, which is exactly what happened. And so that's the, that's the hardest thing I think is when you have these huge one directional moves, you almost think, gosh, this thing is never going to end. But the reality is nothing goes in one direction forever. Eventually things stabilize and, and start to go sideways. And that's exactly what happened. And that's the methodology. And that's why we do what we do. So uh, worked our way back from a, a decent sized loser that happened pretty quick uh, back to a profitable trade. And if, and if and that's the key. If you can take what would have been a losing trade and manage it back to a profitable trade, that's what it's all about. Now, had implied volatility just contracted and gone down to zero, we probably would have gotten out. You know, we did that in a while back. I think it was the euro where we kind of adjusted, rolled, and then implied volatility just collapsed after the whole Brexit thing uh, was kind of over. And so we just got out. We ended up taking a loss on that one. But if implied volatility still high, stays high, 
we're going to stay in that trade and continue to be premium sellers, be short premium, continue to collect credits and uh, work our way back to profits. And that's exactly what we did in bonds. So good trade there. So going back to where we're at, we're up a couple hundred dollars and, um, you know, we're kind of, you know, anytime if we were to put on a straddle, we're kind of targeting about 25% of max profit. So we're almost there. And so uh, assuming we don't have a big swing in price one way or another, into early next week, we will go ahead and take this off and, and, uh, book that profit in ZB. And then if, if, um, if, uh, implied volatility is still high, then, then we'll look to potentially re-enter, reposition and just kind of start the, start the process over. Uh, Apple, we've got the long put vertical here. You can see prices hanging out right inside the range there. We've got Delta Airlines. We put on this long put thinking we were going to get looking for a quick move lower. Um, you know, what's crazy about this is, okay, with the whole coronavirus, you know, we got this push down, we bounced up, and that's when we entered looking for a potential rollover. And what's crazy about this is after we put the trade on, Delta came out and announced that they were canceling all flights in and out of China. And I thought, okay, that's good for our position. That that should make it go lower. And it dipped lower for a second and then just rallied. So interesting stuff how this market is just continuing to shake off uh, some of this some of this bad news. And so um, we're gonna we're gonna you know we've only got seven days left on this. So early next week we're gonna close this out. If we get a quick move lower, you know potentially get back to even or or maybe a little bit of profits. If not, we'll just take a loss on that one. DE, John Deere down about one and a half percent today, which is good for us. So brought price back here, almost back into range, just holding this for that, excuse me, for that short Delta exposure. Uh, DE does have earnings coming up on the 21st. So a week from now, uh, we'll hold this through earnings and just because we want to keep that short Delta on. I mentioned Google, IWM. Another short delta position. We've got this long put vertical. Price is hanging out right here at the break even. Uh, we'll look to roll this one next week. And so this is really our last Feb position. This one in ES are the last ones that we have in Feb that we'll be rolling. So we'll be doing that early next week. Remember, markets close Monday, so we'll do that on Tuesday. Uh, NVIDIA. Uh, I, yeah, I mentioned that one. We've got this uh, short put vertical, so looking for a little bit more up movement um, from from NVIDIA. Uh, QQQ, I mentioned that one. Shopify, I mentioned SMH. So we've got this short strangle. Price is hanging out right here in the upper end of the range. Could use a little bit of down movement and some more time to pass there. I mentioned SPX. I mentioned SPY. VIX, we've still got our bunker trade on. And the goal here is to you know, potentially add another one of these here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, you know, like we talked about in the class, just kind of layer into this uh, to have that that kind of tail risk protection uh, in place if we do get a, a quick move lower in stocks. XBI, we've got the short strangle, looks pretty similar to SMH. Price is hanging out right here in the upper end of the range. Just look for a little bit of down movement and some more theta decay. And then lastly, XLK, we've got this long put vertical here, price hanging out right near the break even, just looking for some more downside to benefit that. So those are all of the alerts. Those are all the trades. Everybody have a great weekend and have a good long weekend. We'll talk to you next week on Tuesday.